Hello, this is Mike at Game for Scratch, and welcome to This Week in Game Development. A quick recap of the world of game development for the week ending September the 20th, and technically the two weeks ending September 20th, since we didn't do one last week. It wasn't enough news to really justify it, so I threw two weeks into one. And there is now enough news, so let's jump on in. Now, as always, there is a text-based version of all the links we're about to discuss are available there. Uh, so if you, you know, if, if I don't cover a story enough and you need more detail, check the link down below. It has links to all of the stories we're about to discuss. All right, now first off, let's talk about one that is very much not going to be relevant for about... Uh, let's go check in on it. Uh, let's see, it expires in 1 minute and 51 seconds. Okay, so you can mostly ignore this one, uh, but Game Maker or YoYo Games had their Game Maker suite up for sale on as part of the uh, uh, Humble Bundle. But as I said, it ends in a minute, so uh, not that important. It was a good deal, though, so if you caught that story earlier, um, yeah. Uh, so moving on, uh, Samsung and Unity launched the Made for Samsung promotion. Uh, now, this guy is kind of special. Basically, what they've done is they say, if you're willing to go with Samsung with 90 days exclusivity on your app, so if it hasn't launched yet, um, you make an Android app and you launch it on Samsung Store. Yes, nobody has ever been to Samsung Store, so there is a downside to this. Uh, but basically, they, they offer four weeks of banner promotion in the Galaxy App Stores to approved applications. Uh, they're aiming to give you at least 30,000 installs per month as part of the promotion. Um, you get put in the top game category for up to four weeks, uh, gifts, trade show presences, etc. So pretty much what you're doing is you're taking your game from a very large market where it might have a lot of difficulty being found into a very small market with a whole lot of promotion around it. It could be worthwhile if you've developed an app. And keep in mind, that's only at least 90 days of exclusivity. So after that period, you could still release to the uh, um, Google Store. So if you're doing... Um, I know one thing that's very common among Android developers or iOS developers in general is to um, do a very limited release of their game to start with. You know, release it in just, say, Canada. So you can only have awesome people testing it to make sure that everything works out right. And then you do a broader release after the fact. Well, you can almost look at the Samsung App Store and this promotion as your way of doing that. So this is where you get the kinks out. I don't think that's how Samsung want you to look at it, but definitely how you could approach this. Now, another thing that happened this week was Unity uh, announced... Oh, yeah. So that was the other aspect of this uh, deal. This is also your game. It needs to be made with Unity. And Unity has direct um, published to Samsung Store ability built right into Unity. Okay, continuing on the Unity news, and there's a bit of it this week and last week, um, is the Unity Splash Screen tool finally arrived in the Unity 5.5 beta. Now keep in mind there is the 5.5 beta, and I think it's 5.3 ish uh, are going concurrently so 5.5 is the beta of the next version while 5.3 point something is the current stable version so that's why we've got the two sets of news overlapping here so the splash screen tool has been advertised for, has been advertised as coming soon for quite a while it's finally here now and what it allows you to do is if you are using the free version you can customize the app, uh, the Made with Unity tag that comes up when you launch your game if you're using the pro version or the newly released Indie version? No, that's not right. Anyways, the, the top two tiers of Unity, um, you can now uh, customize or remove that logo entirely. So that's what this tool allows you to do. They've got a video showing you it in action. Um, so this allows you to make the, you know, made with Unity logo a little bit less obnoxious. Now, another game engine released this week was uh, the Fold Engine 1.2.88. I've been doing an ongoing tutorial series. I'm a big fan of the Fold. It's a very cool, focused, 2D, logo powered game engine. Uh, this released uh, wasn't the most exciting, if I'm honest. Uh, more of an iterative thing. One of the nice things that they've done, though, is they've created single sign-ons. So now if you go to the forums or you go to their dashboard, it's all the same username. So there's a, um, a lot less complexity involved there as well. Uh, there's also you know, a little bit friendlier on how the logins work for the actual editor and having to go back and sign back in. Now, another bit in Game Engine news is the Marmalade SDK is now pretty much dead, which is kind of unfortunate because Marmalade kind of hit a special point. It's a low-level C++-powered um, mobile or um, integrated or uh, embedded device-focused game engine. It's been used for some pretty seriously successful games, such as uh, Peggle, uh, Cut the Rope, and um, EA used it for a couple things. I think one of the Call of Duty mobile games was created on it. So this is a very successful tested engine, but I just don't think they're making money anymore. So they're moving out and basically Marmalade is turning into a games only company and th what they've done is basically promised uh, there's going to be two more releases um, of okay that's SE they're going to be do two more releases coming up uh, one was already happened you're going to hear that about that in a second and then one coming in March 2017 after that you're kind of on your own now you've got the option of um, purchasing a source edition version 
purchase keyword there they're not open sourcing it but you can get the source available so if you need to keep supporting your marmalade titles um, there's going to be a source purchase available now, some people are grumbling about this one and I can understand why um, that would definitely bother people uh, but if you um, are a marmalade developer there are exit strategies unfortunately might cost you money we don't know how much yet and we don't know how that's going to turn out and if you're looking at adopting a marmalade as your technology going forward don't uh, they're pretty much dead uh, another one this week was, so again, Unity 5.3 is in parallel to 5.5. So this is the stable, you go to the website and download Unity, this is the version you get. And they just released 5.3.6 patch 5. Um, mostly a bug fix release. You're going to see a lot of themes this week. A lot of things were set to produce, um, support Xcode 8, which was recently released as part of iOS 10. Uh, so um, they added iPhone 7, 7 Plus entries into the device enumeration, updated the Oculus plugin. Uh, updated it so that it works directly with Xcode 8, and then several typical fixes you see in most of these patches. Another release this week was Wave Engine 2.3.0 was released. Now I actually did a closer look at the Wave Engine a while back, so if you want more details, there's a link right here to jump into that. It's a cool C++ powered cross-platform free game engine. I'm not entirely certain what their business model is, that always makes me a little wary, but this release actually brought some pretty cool stuff. They added a new 2D physics engine, uh, built it around Box 2D. Uh, they added Xamarin Max support, they improved their FPX importer, uh, they added new text functionality, 2D and 3D, uh, new game actions for animations, and uh, other things as you can see here. So it's a nice little uh, release, plus they also basically uh, added a new starter kit, which is more or less a Frogger clone. So uh, if you wanted to check out this engine, now would be a great time. Another engine, uh, not engine, software release this week is Substance Painter 2.3 was released. Now, Substance Painter is a uh, physically based rendering uh, texturing tool. I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. I actually did a look at it in this video. You can see it right there. It is a powerful texture tooling that is taking over the world. And one of the major things with the 2.3 release is that it now has export to Photoshop plugin. So it's got uh, complete layered support, PDS export, or PSD export. And uh, Photoshop while being big, bloated, expensive, is also still pretty much the factory norm for photo editing in the AAA, in the A game space for textures. So um, direct support for its native format is definitely a nice addition to uh, Substance Painter here. Now back on the topic of the Marmalade engine, remember the one I just talked about a couple seconds ago and I said it was dead? Well, they also just got a brand new release. This release is 8.6. 8 uh, the two biggies in this release are an uh, ongoing trend here, support for Xcode 8, so, and thus iOS 10, and support for Android N, or better compatibility with Android N, and then several little fixes, etc. Now, this is actually going to kind of point out why them going, not potentially having the source code going forward or not being supported going forward is going to make Marmalade a really hard choice to go with. Well, what happens when Xcode 9 comes out, or the newest version of Android? Well, if you don't have the source code, and you're not, or if you do have the source code, but you're not willing to do the work yourself to support those platforms, you're screwed. Which is, again, why I'm basically saying from this point on, Marmalade is effectively dead as a choice. Um, another part of Unity 5.5 beta that was just released was their improvements to their animation features. Uh, basically, the animation window was updated uh, for improved performance and, and improved usability, uh, simpler movement scaling, uh, ripple editing of keyframes in your animation. Um, now, way beyond what I could describe, if you actually want to see an action, go ahead and watch this video. You can see the demonstration of the new animation functionality coming in Unity. It's very nice. It's very uh, good dull looking, to be honest, but it is very nice. So it's a cool improvement that they've made there. And our final release this week was the Corona SDK 2016.2. 2949 version was released. Uh, the big and pet, um, reasoning behind this release anyways was support for iOS 10 and um, tvOS uh, app submission guideline changes. So this basically brings it in, in line so that your uh, Corona application can be published on those platforms without being rejected. I'm not sure specifically what behind the scenes was the issue, but the issue is now resolved. Uh, Corona is a mobile focused Lua powered game engine. It's got desktop support now. Uh, it's coming a long way that way. It's also been used for very like a, quite a few published games. So uh, definitely one to check out. And as you can see here, there's also several fixes as part of this release. And that was it. That was uh, this week in game development. Uh, again, for the weeks ending September 20th and the week before that. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. And if you like this kind of news update, I do one every week or every other week. One of those two. Um, and so if that's the thing you want to see, do please click subscribe. It really helps us out. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Goodbye.